So material is a bit different from the other cost elements, labor and overheads. Material can be held in inventory, so material doesn't have to be used immediately. And that means the material that we purchase doesn't have to agree to the material that we use. Now, how does that complicate our standard costing um, variance calculations? Now, think of a situation where we uh, purchase 5,500 kilograms of raw materials, but we only use 5,100 of it. So we buy 5,5 and we use 5,100 and we have 400 kilograms left. That's our closing inventory, closing stock. Now, for our price variance, we need to say, so, so let's write out the price variance formula. So price variance is our standard price less our actual price. So the difference in price paid and the difference what we should have paid times the actual quantity. Now, which actual quantity do we use? Would that be the quantity purchased or the quantity used? And that's the, that's the issue here. So we have two scenarios. We could either value our raw material at standard price, that's what we'll do first, or we can value the, the raw material at actual price. Now, which one um, should we actually use, if we can choose? So, when we use a standard costing system, our inventory is usually valued at, or well, is valued at standard cost. That means our finished goods inventory, our work and process inventory, and we assume also our raw material inventory. So that, that's the three categories of inventory. So if we use a standard costing system, we'll value all of this at standard cost. That's the assumption we make. But then some questions sometimes tell us specifically that raw materials are valued at actual price. So that causes the problem. So which one is the better one? We'll see um, hopefully when we do the examples. Um, well, I'll tell you now, it's the standard price is the better one for control purposes, but I'll show you in the in the example, we'll, we'll illustrate that. So let's uh, look at the first example, and this is where we value raw materials. So I'll just write it here so we remember, value raw materials at standard price. So let's just picture this. Um, here's our company. That's the premises, the physical floor space. And here's our supplier's truck that delivers the raw materials to us. So they, we purchased 5,500 kilograms of this raw material. And we purchased that at, say, 220. It was a cut off a bit there. So we buy it at 220 per kilogram. So at what price are they going to deliver it to us? At the actual price or the standard price? They'll deliver it at the actual price. Remember, the, the supplier is outside of the company. They don't care about our standards that we use. They're going to charge us the invoiced price, so that's the actual price. Now they bring it into our premises. This is our storeroom here. So there's all the shelves that we're going to stack the, the inventory on, the raw materials. So that's 5,500 kilograms of it that we purchased. And now we say we value raw material at standard price. So here on the left we have our standard. So, so say we actually uh, produced 1,000 units for the period. Our standard quantity is 5 kilograms per unit. Our standard price is 2 per kilogram. So that means we have a standard cost of 10 per unit. So if you multiply the quantity by the cost per kilogram, or the kilograms per unit times the cost per kilogram is 10 per, kil per unit. So we value now our raw material at standard price. So this 5,500 units, before we use it, we put it in the storeroom and we value it at standard price, which is 2 per kilogram. So the value would be 11,000. But we purchased it at 220 per kilogram. If we multiply it by the 5,500, that would be 12,100. So there's a variance that occurs immediately when they enter the gates. So that's when we buy it, there's a variance. And that makes sense because who caused this variance? It was the purchasing department. They purchased at the wrong price. So we need to calculate the variance immediately. 
if we valued this at actual price, there would have been no variance there because it would have sit in the storeroom at the actual price, so there would have been no variance. Everything would come into the company at the same value. So then the variance would only occur later on when we use it. And that doesn't make sense because it's a price variance. It's not a usage variance, it's a price variance. So let's calculate this using our table. And then we'll see. So we've got the actual column on this side. Uh, we've got the flexible budget on this side. And then the middle actual quantity of input at standard price. So our flexible budget is how much it should cost us to make the actual units. So we produced 1,000 units. And it's 10 per unit standard cost. So that's 10,000. Or we could have said it's 1,000 times 5 kilograms. So that's 5,000 kilograms times 2 per kilogram. So it's still 10,000. Our actual is the 12,100. So that was our 5,500 kilograms times 220 per kilogram. And now in the middle we need to decide the actual quantity of input should either be the amount purchased or the amount used. So, so we said since the variance occurs when we buy it and we value raw material at standard price, so the variance would be applied to all the units that were purchased, not just the units that were the used. We need to say the full 5,500 that was purchased times the standard price. So it's the actual quantity that was purchased times the standard price. And that's our 11,000 that we had here. So our price variance would then be 11,000 minus 12,100. So that's 1,100. It's unfavorable because we paid more than what we should have paid. So it's bad for us. And if we just audit this price variance, that would be the difference between the two that we should have paid less the 220 that we did pay multiplied by all the kilograms that it applies to, which is the amount that was purchased. And then we can quickly do the usage variance, so, or the quantity variance. Remember, we call it the usage variance if it's material, but it's a quantity variance. So, um, remember, the quantity variance looks at, did we use the right amount for the thousand units? So for 1,000 units, we should have used 5 kilograms each. So we should have used 5,000 kilograms. How much did we use? So we compare the should have used to the did use. Now we can't say we used 5,500 kilograms because we have closing inventory of 400 left. So we only used the difference of 5,100 kilograms. So we, there were no opening inventory, we purchased 5,500, we have 400 left, so we used 5,100. So that's what, that, what's, that is what goes into the middle column, 5,100 kilograms at the standard. So it's the actual quantity of input into the factory. So let's picture the factory. We take 5,100 units in there, kilograms, and 400 stays behind in closing stock. So that 4,100 is moved over at standard price because it's already valued at standard price. Remember, it sits on the shelf at standard price. So we move it to the factory at standard price. So that's what we do here. 5,100 kilograms at the standard price, and that equates to 10,200. And now if you compare it to, use, to calculate the quantity variance, it's 10,000 what we should have um, paid versus 10,200 what we actually paid so that's a difference of 200 and it's unfavorable let's check whether it makes sense so we should have used 5,000 kilograms we actually used 5,100 so there's a difference of 100 kilograms that we wasted at the standard price of two yep it's 200 and it's unfavorable because we used more than what we should have used but now, if you look very carefully, we've got a problem here. Because we compare the flexible budget to the actual, that's our total variance, and we try to explain it with the two in the middle. So we've got a quantity variance and a price variance. But the, but the middle column has different values. So there's some way, something that went missing here. If we add up the quantity variance and the price variance, that's 1,300, 
that does not make up the difference between the flexible budget and the actual. There's another 800 that we need to explain. So the difference between this value, the quantity purchased at the standard price, and the quantity used at the standard price, that we need to explain. Where does this 800 difference come from? So think carefully what happened here. We, what happens in the store? What do we still have there? We have 400 kilograms of closing stock. And how do we value our raw materials in this example? We value it at standard price of 2 per kilogram. And that is 800. So that's our 800 that's missing there. It's our closing inventory. So that's the difference between what we purchased at the standard price and what we used at the standard price. It's our closing inventory, the 400 kilograms. Now, just to say again, why is, the, the, why is it better for control purposes to value raw material at standard price? If we value raw materials at standard price, we will convert it immediately when we take it into the company. So we'll uh, realize we'll have a price variance at that point, at the point where it occurs. If we value it at actual, we will only see a variance once we start using it in the factory. And that might be two months from now. So even though we purchased at the wrong price, the variance will only be uh, calculated or realized when we use a thing. So that's why it's better to value raw material at standard cost. So let's look at an example where we value raw materials at the actual price and see how it's different. 